Okay folks, I'm your teacher Demotro, coming back to my combo classroom after getting my second hip surgery. They had to put some ceramic in both sides of my hip to make me more symmetrical again. Hey, it's looking pretty symmetrical around here too. Uh, humans love symmetry. You know, it shows up in nature, in music, in architecture, even in the human body itself. In a human body, there's a visual symmetry where if you flip us across an axis, a lot of parts would look the same. Now, if we write down the names of these parts and look at this list, this isn't visually the same in both directions. It looks like... However, if we take each word as a unit, this does read the same in both directions, and that makes it a palindrome. If we look at a word like bid, written lowercase in English, this looks visually the same in both directions. But if we take each letter as a unit and then flip it, we get dib in reverse. So we don't call it a palindrome. Whereas a word like bib, this doesn't look the same in both directions. But when we take what these symbolize, it does go bib the other way too. Palindromic. There's some cool palindromic words in English, like rotator, race car, deified, repaper, and more. And there's also some great palindromic sentences that people have invented. So these are some of my favorites right here. No melon, no lemon. Some men interpret nine memos. Do geese see God? Combo class, sides reversed is salk obmok. That's weird, how did combo class work in one? Well, this one, you can kind of fill in the blank because sides reversed is is a palindrome so you can put whatever you want there and it flipped there and <laughs> kind of get a sentence all of these could be called a palindrome however the word palindrome for some reason isn't a palindrome whoever named that totally blew a great opportunity it should have been called something palindromic like if we cut off the end and flip it we'd get palinolap or if you wanted more syllables we could have gone palindrodnalap. Any of these would have been so much more true to the self of the word than palindrome, a non-palindromic word. So if we can have palindromic words and sentences, why not palindromic numbers? Well, sure enough, a palindromic number is the name for a number that written in whatever base you're writing your number in reads the digits the same forward and backwards. Not visually, but as a palindrome does symbolically. 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, whichever direction we go. Now, obviously, there will be infinite of these palindromic numbers, but if we start looking for which ones can have certain properties, like if we can have any palindromic square numbers or palindromic prime numbers, we might find some interesting patterns. When I first encountered these palindromic numbers, I was worried that they might only be interesting because we happened to write in base 10. With nine different digits before 10, one zero is our first two digit number. If we had written in another way of counting, this number might not be palindromic. However, along this journey, we will discover some palindromic properties that happen even in other ways of counting that might expose some things about numbers deeper than just our base 10 system. If we look for square numbers that are palindromic, we can find an infinite amount of them, some of which we squared a non-palindromic number to get, and some of which we square a palindrome to get another, including these, my favorite examples. 11 squared is 1, 2, 1. 111 squared, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. And all of these chains of ones, which are technically known as rep units, but I like to call hyper 11s, because it looks like an 11 going crazy. All of these hyper Hyper 11 squared up through the ninth Hyper 11 will make this cool staircase. Now, if we look for palindromic cube numbers, we'll find a much more restricted pattern. Here's a list of the first ones, and you'll notice that on all of these palindromic cube numbers, the number we cubed to get them is also palindromic. 
with one exception. 2201 is the only number we've found that's not a palindrome, but its cube is. And we've searched many numbers, so some mathematicians believe it's the only one, but we haven't proven it yet. Now, as for palindromic fourth powers, we've only found one form of number that can be raised to the fourth power and be palindromic. These numbers I like to nickname hollow 11s, because that's what they look like. But basically, it's 11, 101, then another zero, and another zero, and continue onward. If we look at the squares of these hollow 11s, we get palindromic numbers with their own growing pattern, just pumping full of more zeros. And if we look at the cubes of those hollow 11s, we also get palindromic numbers with their own growing pattern. And same with the fourth powers. But this form of fourth power, like I mentioned, are the only fourth powers that are palindromic that we've ever discovered. We don't know if there can exist any other ones that didn't come from a hollow 11. But at fifth powers, the pattern breaks. None of these are palindromic anymore. And in fact, not only for the hollow 11s, but in general, it's conjectured that there might not be any perfect fifth powers, sixth powers, or any higher power that is palindromic. We haven't proven it yet, so theoretically we could find a fifth power palindrome someday, but it's believed by many mathematicians that the fourth power powers are where they end. Now what if instead of squaring and cubing, we decided to add some palindromes together? Well, it turns out any positive integer can be made by adding three palindromes. Like if I wanted to make one, two, three, four, five, six, turns out I have the option of these three palindromes adding to it. Or here's three that add up to the number 1500. This works for any positive integer and not just in the base 10 system that we choose to count in. This is true in any similar numerical base, five or greater. Now, since we're starting to get the hint of properties of palindromic numbers that may be true in other ways of counting as well, let me give a quick refresher on what it means to be in base five or another base like that. When we see a number in base 10, we see the thing on the right as how many ones there are, the next place is how many tens there are, then how many hundreds there are, and so on. But let's actually think of that as how many 10 to the zeroth powers there are, which sounds weird, but anything to the zeroth power is one, and that makes our pattern clearer and neater. And this is how many 10 to the first powers there are, how many 10 to the second powers there are, and so on. Now, if we wrote a number in a different base, this place would just be how many b to the zeros there are. That would be how many b to the ones there are, how many b to the twos there are, and so on. A random example is if we see the number written one, two, three, we interpret that as one hundred or ten squared, two tens, and three ones. But if we saw this in a world that counted in base twelve, it would mean one twelve squared, two 12s and three ones, which actually adds up to a different number. If you were to write down how many dice are on this table right here, which is 100 dice, in our system of writing, base 10, that's called 100. But if we lived in base 12, we would write down the amount of dice there as 84, because there's eight 12s plus four ones. In base two or binary, it would look like that. And these are some other ones in between. And we can see that 100, which wasn't palindromic in our base, is palindromic in some other bases. Sometimes a number, in fact very often, secretly is palindromic in some base or another. But are there any numbers that aren't palindromic in any base? Let's say we now just have 19 dice we're analyzing, and we want to know if we can write that number in some base to make it a palindrome. Well, if we start with base 2, how binary would write that amount of dice, and go up through base 3's representation and onward, 
past our representation, base 10 writing it as 1, 9, we don't see any palindromes until we get to the base one less than the number we're looking at, where that number will always be represented as 1, 1. And when we're looking at the base being the number, it's 1, 0. And if we look at the base one higher than our number, we need a new symbol for our number. So if we want to find numbers that are not palindromic, we're going to discard some of these trivial cases. The one where it's one under the base is always palindromic. The one one over the base technically would be always palindromic too, as its own one digit character. So we'll wipe these off our list and say, which numbers aren't a palindrome anywhere up through two under the base to discard those trivial cases. Numbers like this are called strictly non-palindromic numbers. Numbers that can't be written as a palindrome in any base between two and two under them. And here's a list of the smallest strictly non-palindromic numbers. Ironically, some of them look palindromic to us because there's some trivial cases here. But then we get to some interesting ones. Like who knew that 103 can't be written as a palindrome in any base between 2 and 101. And it turns out that apart from these tiny first ones, every strictly non-palindromic number greater than 6 is prime. Which makes you wonder, if all the strictly non-palindromic numbers above 6 are prime, what about palindromic numbers themselves? When can a palindromic number be prime or not? Back in the base 10 system that you're comfortable with, here's a list of the smallest palindromic primes. A list which we're not even sure is infinite or not. We don't know if there's a final palindromic prime or if they go on forever. Now, if you look at the list of the smallest ones here, you might notice something strange. None of them have four digits. And if we'd made this list long enough, you'd also notice none would have six digits or eight digits or any even amount apart from 11. 11 is the only palindromic prime with an even number of digits. Why? The reason for this is because of a strange divisibility trick for the number 11. You may have heard of some divisibility tricks before to test if a number can be evenly divided by stuff like 3 or 5 or 9, but what about this one for 11? What you do is take a number that you're curious whether it's divisible by 11, you add up the digits that are in odd spots in the number, and then separately add up the digits that are in even spots in the number, and you find the difference between those. And if that difference is a multiple of 11, so is your original number. And that includes 0 as a multiple of 11. So let's look at what happens if we take a palindromic number. The odd spots are a copy of the even spots in a different order. So they'll always have the same sum. The difference will always be 0. And so any palindromic number with an even amount of digits is divisible by 11, making 11 the only possible prime palindrome with an even number of digits at all. And this is one of those traits that doesn't rely on base 10. It's base independent, meaning that whatever base you were counting in, when you're looking for your palindromic primes, the one written 1-1 one, one is the only possible one that could be a prime and a palindrome with an even number of digits. It turns out that the most important palindromic primes, apart from 11, might be the other mutant hyper 11s I was mentioning. And sometimes they need to be pretty long before you find another one that's a prime. But these hyper 11, or formerly known as rep unit primes, are so important and interesting that we're gonna do a whole episode on those soon. And I know I already promised a whole episode later about the biggest primes ever we've found called Mersenne primes. But what if I told you that this episode and that future episode are going to secretly be the same one? 
All right, so those Hyper 11s will be back soon. But for now, let's wrap up this palindromic whirlwind with one last fun sort of game that some mathematicians are currently working on. And in this game, if you could call it that, you take a number, flip its digits, and add them together. And if you hit a palindrome, you stop. But if you take a number, reverse the digits, add them, and it's not a palindrome, you do it again. You reverse the digits of that, add those together. And in this case, we did hit a palindrome after the second step. With the number 59, it takes three steps to hit a palindrome. And the number 89 takes 24 steps before it hits that monstrous palindrome. Now, most numbers do hit a palindrome if you repeat this process enough times. But the number 196 is the smallest number that we don't know its status in this game as to whether it will ever become a palindrome or just keep growing towards infinity. Mathematicians have done this reverse an ad game to 196 to the point where it's gotten to a number with over a billion digits with no palindromes on the way, but have been unable to prove whether it will never hit a palindrome or if someday it will. Now in some other bases like base two, there are numbers that we can prove will never reach a palindrome if we did a reverse and ad process in the same way, but in that base's numbers. If we put in base two's interpretation of 10110, the number we know is 22, and we do a reverse and add process, after four steps, it becomes a kind of self-similar looking thing. And four more steps, it's just adding a one there and a zero there, add another one there, another zero there, and it keeps hitting these self-similar expanding numbers that we've proven will never be palindromic. And we've proven that there are numbers like this that will grow without being palindromic in any base that's a power of two, as well as, for some reason, bases 11, 17, 20, and 26. But in base 10, we're not sure whether there are any numbers that do that, that can be proven to never hit a palindrome, or if this one just hasn't hit it yet. Palindromic numbers are an example of how something that might seem like a random quirk about how we write a number may secretly have some interesting patterns behind the scenes of how numbers work in general. So thanks for watching, and now to emphasize our palindromic mood, we're gonna play the entire episode at normal speed in reverse. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Have a great palindromic day. I'll see you next class.